starting it right now. There we go. We're live. Uh, welcome to Kicking and Streaming, a show about internet outrage and the issues surrounding it. Uh, with me today, I have Matt Michaud in Toronto and Rena Hundert in Los Angeles. Uh, how's it going, guys? Rena, you can go first. Uh, we can't see each other on this, so we don't know if we're interacting <laughs> each other. <laughs> uh, things are going good. It's a beautiful, sunny day. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's good. That's uh, that's an LA answer right there. That's a, that's quite the LA. Things are great here. Thanks, Greg. Having yeah. a good time sipping a coffee. It's a nice, overcast, cloudy, foggy day here in Toronto. Looking out at the construction. Just being inspired by all the growth and the beautiful scenery of cranes and fog. It's wonderful. The word "gross" really has two connotations. It's a good double on uh, It's you know, it's one of my skills. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, uh, yeah, so let's talk about what we're here to talk about. Uh, so earlier this week, Jerry Seinfeld uh, made a couple comments about the state of political correctness in uh, on college campuses, uh, saying that him, Larry the Cable Guy, Chris Rock, they don't want to do the college tours anymore because um, students are too oversensitive. He said they're looking, basically looking for any way to accuse anyone of Sexism, racism, ableism, all the isms <laughs> that are out there. Every ism, except... These kids yeah. today are being too nice about things. I think, first of all, if, let me just start this off by we're all officially old. Because anytime you start off anything with kids these days, you've officially hit a mark that there's no going back to. 75 years old. <laughs> let me just say we're officially three miserable old people going... <laughs> What's with kids these days? And the problem is they're all a bunch of fucking wimps. Yeah, and it's because uh, of participation medals. <laughs> <laughs> it's like like whip, like whipping. No wimps, like oh, uh, wimp. politi the politically correct term for pussy, if you will, in that sense. Uh, I've never called it my wimp. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm talking the personality of a no, pussy. I reversed it. I reversed oh, you did. Look at you. Look at you. Tricky. Look at you. Um, Greg, what do you think about that? What do I think about it? Um, I mean, I I spend entirely too much time on the internet, so I, I understand what he's talking about because I see it every day. Um, stuff like, uh, let's just throw out uh, the, the example for uh, comic books. Um, you see, what was it, a couple months ago, uh, they had the uh, the cover of the Batman where the Joker was holding Batgirl hostage as an, om as an homage to a to an earlier comic from, I think it was the 80s or the 90s. Right. And uh, you see the outrage, uh, you just see the outrage coming from the young people, uh, how it uh, supports rape culture and... Well, young people, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Well, you see, uh, you know, it's, uh, what was it they said? They said that the cover looked uh, too rapey and it could be triggering to people who've uh, suffered uh, sexual violence. Uh, well, there's a lot of outdated stuff like that, like even from the 80s and 90s, that you don't even realize was in there. Like recently I watched the movie 16 Candles, um, and I totally forgot that there's this time, there's like the hot guy and the hot girl, and then the hot guy ends up with the ugly girl because it's basically an ugly girl fantasy movie. Are we all forgetting um, that the key word there is fantasy and that this isn't real life and there's a difference between entertainment, fantasy, and I real agree. life? I can I just say that there's a scene where the hot guy takes his hot girlfriend who is passed out and drunk and passed out. Right. It's like, ugh, like on Valium. He puts her in the car and then gives the nerd guy the keys to the car and is like, do whatever you want with her. Yeah, well, that kid, well, that's, that's a little fucked up. <laughs> and we're all just like, oh, good for the nerd. Like, that's fucked up. Really? Is that is that the tone? Is, of the movie? Is that like, everyone's up? rooting <laughs> for the nerd? Watching it, it was like oh, I was on the I was not on the hot girl's side, you know, because she's kind of a bitch. <laughs> so, so she, she deserves it because she's a bitch. I feel bad about it, and now in retrospect that I'm older, I can see these things. But like they were not clear to me. I guess also because of the cultural context of like the time, right. the decade, you know. Uh, but that's no excuse, or is it? I don't know. Yeah, but in in the example that you're giving right there, Reens, uh, that that seems kind of like clear to me. That's obviously like a, that's obviously a case of uh, but like you know something that shouldn't happen. Like that's right. That's obviously wrong to everyone. Batman, right? the, the but whole. Like, but you trust the nerd. You trust right, that the nerd is a good guy. Like in a poster, like with the Joker, who's the clear villain, psychopath, nihilist, chaotic freak holding the, the hero's female psychic hostage, how? 
how can anybody look at that and go, oh, that's the right thing to do? No, he's the villain. He's doing a villainous thing. If anything, it reinstates and, and like reconfirms the notion that villains do fucked up shit like kidnapping and holding girls hostage. I agree like, with that. It's a villain. If it was Batman doing it with his dick out going, ah, yeah, this, is my, this is my sidekick. Well, you'd be like, story. Batman, what the fuck happened to you? Yeah. <laughs> but is this is the Joker, the world's most number one villain holding a hero hostage. There's no way that promotes rape culture. It promotes villains who fucked up shit in the comic book world. They also, like, we have to understand, this is a comic book world. This is a fictional life. There's a difference than if it was a politician. If that was Obama's campaign or something like that, or a presidential campaign where he's got America, the Statue of Liberty in a tight dress, and he's taped her to a chair, and he's got his tongue out to her like, I'm ready to fuck America. Well, that could be a it's a different story. Yeah, but it's a political. This is entertainment. It's different. There's a, fi- there's a line between reality and fiction, and we've lost that line, and everything's become blurred. And that's a huge problem with the sensitivity. You see, um, one thing is uh, a lot of the time, um, the the reason that's given for for uh, stuff like this, especially like, uh, especially in the case that we're talking about right now with the uh, the Joker cover, uh, a reason is the main reason is that it, it could be potentially triggering for someone who has been a victim of sexual violence. Um, so, yeah, I guess I can't speak on that. Uh, now, is that is that something that you know should the entire world be uh, censoring themselves for the sake of, of you other know, people? For a very small minority of people who've, who've actually been the victim of something like this, should the entire world be censoring itself? When I was in elementary school, my dad once brought me McDonald's to lunch for lunch, and the teachers made me eat it alone because the other kids would feel bad that they didn't get a tasty lunch. Whoa. And and that to me was is the start of all of this. Well, some people don't have it great, so you all have to live in center of yourself for the people who who just who have had bad things. Look, well, I'm not saying people have had it, but there's people that have prevailed and still who've had terrible things happen to them, and they move forward. There's people that haven't and they don't move forward. And like, I'm not saying one's right or one's wrong, who's strong, who's weak, but you can't live your life in fear of other people's feelings. You I can be aware like, of them. You shouldn't censor, I mean, you shouldn't really censor what people say, but it's more just like if you are an advocate against rape culture, then take the piss out of rape culture, attack rape culture. Absolutely, know? absolutely. Don't don't just run away from it. And especially like going back to the whole comedians thing, like to me there are three types of people that that can't really complain ever publicly through things, and those are comedians, rappers, and rock stars because... Like those are three three entertainers that are based on having confidence and just and just facing a problem head on instead of running around it. You know what I mean? So like for me, it's like there's a difference. Again, it goes back to entertainment versus reality. Coming from a dude but so who many loved people Eminem are growing stupid. up, but it's like so many, people, so many people are stupid and not willing right. to their lack of experience. But that's the thing: is the, the internet has given those dumb people the voice. When the Montreal Canadiens lose a game and the fans are booing Carey Price, it's only the it's only the idiots and the bleachers who are booing him, not the not the intelligent ones who are are, are like I was going to say not the intelligent ones who have the money to sit up front. But bleachers, <laughs> but bleachers turn everyone into idiots, and because right. um, it's mob mentality. And wait, exactly. are you saying that like the richer people are smart? Yeah, I'll, I'll say that as a joke. I'll say that as a joke. <laughs> it's already with the lunch like, it's, only, it's only the dumb people up in the third class that are causing the noise. Not as rich white folks sitting in the good, the good seats. Come on. So you know, let me ask you. Let me ask you something. Do you see this as like, um, you know, the, the entire world having to lower their sensibilities to the person with the the, the easiest to offend sensibilities? Does I that think make the, sense? the only people that get offended so easily are people that have the time to get offended. If you're People in other in other in other you know societies in other parts of the world who aren't as coddled and and privileged and comfortable as us growing up don't have time to fucking be like well my feelings are hurt because you know I mean you their feelings get hurt but there's a focus on on doing shit that like on doing shit that matters and I, again I sound like an arrogant prick right now and I'm obviously coming I, from a white dude I don't think dude, so I but. think they I think there are people in struggling countries or whatever you want to call it that like are definitely deeply offended by ideas that are out there and images and I don't think that's true at all 
I don't think they're blogging or Tumblring about it, though. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many reasons why I said that. Anyways. I just, like, just, I can't. Like, I'm almost going to put myself on mute. Like, just like that. <laughs> I know why. I know, I know. I did that on purpose. <laughs> but it's, I don't know. I just think that. I'm just, we just complain, and it's because we have the ability to complain. The internet has given us a voice. The lack of censorship and copyright on the and 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 uh, the lack of filtration of what gets put onto the internet. Well, but it's also that there are so many sexual predators that are still just out there and are respected members of the community and are and nothing's happening to them. That's <laughs> the. the the amount of people that are the, the the amount of people that are like the predators types and the evil types, I don't think has changed. I think people have always had that in them. It's just there's been more opportunity thanks to the advances of technology to be a sicko, and people are hiding. The, it's again you put it, put a mask on someone and they act differently. The internet is one giant mask for society. I don't disagree with that at all. Um, you know, one thing I was actually thinking about earlier this week is, uh, I don't know if you guys remember To Catch a Predator with, uh, with yeah. Chris Hansen. Yeah. Um, like, one thing that always surprised me is whenever they go to a different city, they're, they're, they have, like, 50 guys that they pull in. Yeah. Like, every single city. Like, I, I... And if we were to try and do something like shit in Montreal, like, would we get 50 guys of course. Within, within 20 of course. miles of my postal code? Of is course that... you would. The devil lives next door. It always has. The devil is everywhere. It's all about who has got a grip of it. And the internet allows us to allows us to be to play to play the angel and the devil so much easier because we get to hide through our username, and we get to lose our real identity and put on this cape or put on the opposite of a cape and be the hero like or anti-hero. You sound like you're speaking from personal experience. <laughs> I just it's it's you can just see it. It's you know it's the number one. It's like, you know, I remember in elementary school, they were like, the psychologists were like, you don't wear the mask in school because it makes kids do things they wouldn't because they're hiding behind the mask. Well, that's, like I said, the internet is the mask, and you're hiding behind a firewall. That's why dudes send dick pics. You would never walk up to a girl and be like, look at my dick, because you get pepper sprayed maced, or like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you don't do that because there's a consequence, but you do it on the internet because there's a whole internet between you and them. You're not going to get beat up. The worst that happens is she goes, boys. No, not boys. It freaks, pervs. They're, it just gives so much more opportunity maybe, to pervs. Maybe it's part of like a craving to be more in our natural element. Like It's like if we all grew up in a tribe where we were all hanging out naked all the time, it wouldn't be weird. <laughs> no. I don't know. For a guy no, to it, girl be like, look at my dick. Well, because, <laughs> again, it's not the penis. It's the context of the penis that matters so much more. <laughs> If a guy's just hammering away at a rock trying to start a fire with his dick out, not a big deal because that's how he dresses in this tribe. But if you're sleeping and the same guy is done hammering the rock, climbs into your tent and just sticks it in your face, it's a little freaky now because now he's, it's now a weapon and no longer just a part of his body. It's like a fist. A fist could be something that helps or kills. It's all context of what it's in at that scissors of time and what the purpose, person's aim is behind the words the insult, the threat, the jab, the joke, the post, the hashtag, whatever the fuck you want to call it. So you never feel weird as a white man? I feel weird all the time <laughs> <laughs> as a white man. Why? Wait, speak to that. <laughs> I, uh, it's almost like, it's like part of me is like, part of me is like this inner battle I have where it's like as, as like a straight, tall, middle class white dude. Uh, it's all able-bodied too, and I'm gonna touch on that later. But it's like I'm like, yeah, but what the hell? You, you're censoring us, and now I'm not allowed to say everything I do. I feel is wrong. I feel like a bad person for existing. And then the one part of me is like, well, that's how everyone else feels after what it's like to be someone else the, the whole time. Now you're finding a taste of your own medicine. And then the other part of me is like, well, you don't solve two wrongs don't make a right because then we're just gonna keep fighting back and forth forever. And there's never gonna be a middle ground where we just go, hey. We're all the same. But Let's what's really? The fuck out. I'm sorry. What's really being taken away from you? Just you saying deprecating remarks about minorities that you're not a part of? What's no? What's saying deprecating remarks about minorities? No, like, not at all. Taken, what's the power that's being taken away from you exactly? Absolutely, the power to feel that it's not okay to feel bad. The power that if I feel like I'm the, the double standard 
where like again like I, I don't really give for me personally I don't give a fuck what anyone says I'm just gonna do what I want anyways this is just I'm using a generalization because that's the point of this it's not a personal thing it's like a generalization thing right it's that if you are told that you have everything you need for you everything you need and, and you're a specific group of people and like I'm playing devil's advocate if you can argue both sides you gotta argue both sides you you, you feel okay I'm a, you're, you're a white able-bodied, straight male. You're privileged. Now you get sad and you have this feeling of sadness in you, but then you start then you start going, well, what, wait, why am I sad? Why am I upset? I'm a white, able-bodied, upper middle class. You're not allowed to feel, feel bad. You're not allowed you're to feel well, sad. You're well-fed, yeah. You're not allowed to feel sad. So then instead of going, oh, well, I'm just having a bad day, you go, there's something wrong with me. And then you go, why is there something wrong with me? Maybe it's because I don't have a soul because I'm from the suburbs. Maybe it's because of this. And you start <laughs> questioning yourself. And all of a sudden, that doubt, there is nothing more detrimental to a person's confidence and, and, and well-being than the, that self-doubt of, is there something wrong with me? There's nothing wrong with anybody. There's just different people who are afraid to, to admit that there is a difference in them than from anywhere else. Well, that's, we want, what's that? Sorry, that's actually something I've noticed as well uh, on the internet. Like, uh, yeah, from my perspective, like, I, I want to be a good person. I want to understand... Uh, the plights that that women have to do absolutely uh, with, when it comes to issues of sexual discrimination. I want to under you know I want to do my best to understand when uh, you know an African American deals with issues of uh, discrimination against them. I, I want to be on the right side of this and I want to absolutely be standing and care. Uh, okay, but could I say also like the only thing I can speak to is being female and Jewish, obviously. But like I think what annoys me more personally, which I don't find this on the side of the PC, but like it's like it's that guilty look somebody gives you when they're trying not to offend you. That that bothers me more oh. than somebody just letting it all hang out. You know, like it's the, pity, it's the pity that you show the dying man that makes him the, de the devil you know is yeah, or the devil you're about. hiding it is the worst thing ever. I say if you're racist and you want to be a bigot or a sexist or ableist or whateverist, if you want to be an ist, go out and be an ist as loud as you can because now we know well, who to not talk to. I don't know. That's not exactly that's what not, I was saying. I'm, like I'm going, I'm obviously, again, speaking in general, take what I say with a grain of salt. I'm exaggerating for, for effect. But, like, if there's three people standing in the street corner, if you're walking down Dundas Square or Times Square or you're at, or you're, uh, at Hollywood and, and uh, whatever, Hollywood Boulevard, and you see that crazy person out there screaming about how the gays are evil or women are bad or all blacks are bad or this or that. And then you walk by there and you go, that person's fucking nuts, right? But the person who hides it and keeps it down inside and then gets – and everyone's like, oh, you know, Greg's a good guy or Tom's a good guy. Tom's a real solid dude, solid guy. But inside he's, an ape, he's a racist, evil son of a bitch. I mean, and then what happens to Tom? He becomes um, he gets a job as a boss and he gets to exact ex, 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 extract that power on people. Well, and they're all men in your story, but anyways, no. But I mean, I was saying more like, like the kind of lefty bourgeois, bourgeois, like overgrown hipster types that are like trying to be politically correct, and when they are white and don't have experience, like it's like yeah, well, that the pity that they look at the pity because it's like it comes from this pity place of sensitivity more so. Yeah, have no spine or backbone. It's Seems, it comes off socially, like it's coming from a place of like, ooh, like like, and then you're like treating the person from that other group different already, just because of just because of your own not wanting to deal with the fact that racism is real and that like prejudice is real. This is real, like. Uh, can I jump in? Yeah, um, go ahead. I kind of have a, a philosophy that I've developed when it comes to issues of racism and sexism and all the isms. Uh, you know, it, it's <laughs> not. It, it's not. It's not like. It's not like something like racist is like a job title. It's not something you're going to put on your business card. It's. Uh, it's more of a pattern of behavior than anything else, right? Like you can. You can. You know. Uh, you can, not be a racist, uh, but accidentally say something insensitive. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, and that's and that seems to be the, the major uh, problem that I'm seeing a lot online. Like there's like this vilification culture. That's Absolutely. Going on there. 
uh, where someone might make a comment not understanding how uh, people of a different race or, or gender or whatever could, could perceive it. And, you know, they might even be trying to say something good or trying to be understanding. And then there's this just hate mob that comes well, that's, out. And that's, sensation, that's how sensationalism, that's sensationalism in the media and how it sells. So it's like that's just the media looking for something to spin to, like, Make content yeah, we'll so that talks, they get more right? eyeballs on their show, and you know they get more then, people watching their show. Like that's just the controversy sells thing. So it's like if you're a public figure, just pay someone to do your PR and stay the hell out of it. <laughs> Basically. Yeah, or you, you know, I just ah, it's just too there's too much of it going on. There's too much. It's the it's just it hasn't changed. It's the same thing over and over again, and it has nothing. And these people, the mob, isn't born. The people, the mob, may care to some degree about about these issues and these political issues they're they're pushing and they're attacking people for. But half of it, ninety percent of it, is just so they feel better about themselves because they they like. If you really care, you're not on Facebook, Tumblr, and you're out actually doing something. You're not. It's it's so much easier to just post a status and write an angry comment on a video than it is to get off your ass and actually do something. And and it's so much easier to feign offense than it is to actually put into a plan of attack to combat something constructively as opposed to just in a never-ending rhetorical Facebook debate that ends in use, I did this, you did this, you're bad, I'm good, high horse this, high horse that, morality. It's just a waste of time. That's all it is. Uh, yeah. yeah, I guess so. I think it's interesting. It's, it's something equip- that like didn't used to happen, I feel. Or maybe at like town hall meetings or something. Yeah, and who was the people that spoke about town hall? It was all the... Susie, the nosy neighbor, the, you know, it's always those types. The ones that are the loudest ones are usually the ones with the. Yeah, but everybody stuff. else went to watch, and so they could gossip about them. <laughs> yeah, That's while the uh... leaders stood back and formulated their own plans, and the real people that changed things wrote, ran, and did things to affect it. They weren't the ones. The, they weren't the loudest ones in the courtroom. That's they were the uh... ones observing and working. That's another thing I've noticed about this internet uh, outrage culture is a lot of the time what you have is twenty-year-old white women, uh, you know advocating for, let's say, African-Americans. Uh, right. When, you know, if African-Americans are going to get offended, bro, they're going to let you know. They'll let you yeah. know when they're offended. You don't have to go out and nitpick and try, just in case there might be uh, an African-American that gets offended in a comic. So you're, like, on watch, and you're waiting, waiting for that minute that anyone says, that's wrong, get offended on someone else's behalf. And that's yeah. that seems to be what we're seeing a lot of on the Internet these days. Yeah, it's just like it's like, hey man, like, why do you why do you assume that you need to speak for someone else? Like, let them. It's almost more of an insult. I don't know. To me, I look at it like if someone, if I'm if I'm like go to, if I look at it, someone's like, hey, are you okay? Is everything okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna be okay. I'll let you know if something's bothering you. you know, the it's, example, it's like, I guess that I can speak to that. I don't know. I don't know about the bro. that will let you know thing, but <laughs> the example I could speak to that speaks to that for me is like when feminists. When people that call themselves feminists say that they're against uh, the hijab. Yeah, I noticed uh, you posted about that on Facebook not too long ago. Uh, Did I? Oh. Yeah, I remember there was a post about that where, uh, like, you know, uh, a Muslim woman wearing a hijab, uh, you know, might understand that this is part of my culture, this is something I like doing, this is part of how I identify myself. So when you're saying that my culture is sexist against me, I disagree. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like you can't, it's, you can't be that's feminist racist and, and like, that's, that's, have to I that's the most fucking basic part of form of racism, though, is going. Our culture is the norm. If what we're doing, you're doing what we're not doing. Clearly, you're oppressed and feel like shit. You need our way of life to feel happy. Yeah, it's militant that's, pluralism, and it's part of the reason I didn't. I didn't want to stay in Quebec, to be honest. There you go. That's a big word that I don't know, but all I know is that <laughs> it's it's wrong. <laughs> All I know is that just because youth makes no you happy good. doesn't mean it makes other people happy. All right, what's people the next do what they want. Let's move uh, on. To- yeah, let's move on to the next subject. Uh, so, oh fuck, what was it again? Um, it? Oh yeah. Well, we can, while we're talking about white women standing up for other women, let's talk about. Yeah, I mean, uh, let's talk about Rachel blah 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 whose last name we can't. Oh, pronounce. you want to talk about that already? Um, Measle bub. Yeah, her this last one. Name. This one actually worries me a little bit. Uh, kind of making ourselves a little bit of a target here if we're going to talk about this, because I mean, none of us really can understand the perspective uh, of an African American person, because none one of, us of my are best African American people. Three of my best friends are African American people. <laughs> that's like the oldest like oh I'm not racist but I know that's... <laughs> I have two of them on speed of them on speed dial 
well, it, yeah, okay. Like, if they want to come in and comment, we can send them <laughs> out and uh, they can jump in here. I'm but, so uh, not afraid of being called racist that I don't give a shit if I make that joke because I'm uh, not. So I'm not going to give my opinion of this because I, I don't feel like I'm well informed to uh, well informed enough to give my own opinion. But uh, just uh, I, there are two schools of thought on this. Um, the first is the transracial school of thought. Um, <laughs> I love that. That's funny. Transracial, where you identify as a different race other from the one you have. And then there's the other uh, school of thought. Got it. Andre, wait, can we stop at the transracial for a second? I feel, I, I honestly at times feel like I'm an angry black man trapped in a goofy white guy's body. Sometimes I feel, and I'm not even joking. No, I'm just saying. I, I talk about that. I actually have a joke about that on stage where I talk about how I'm pre-op transracial. <laughs> so when I when I saw that when that, when that when that woman came out, I was like, "This is such a great way for me to say into that bit." It's funny because transracial stage. transracial That's... is a word that had come up, but I you know this is the first solid example. Uh, I, I've been saying it for months now. I didn't even know it was like an actual term. I thought I I thought I made it up. But, but Rena, you 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 had something you wanted to say about the transracial issue? Well, I just yeah. wanted to pause there because it's just such a controversial concept, and uh, and also just like. That the that the Caitlyn Jenner thing just happened. I uh, yeah. Why is that so evil to make the comparison? I, no, I it's just... not. It's not. It, well, it's just that they're. It's. It, I just think it's interesting they came up at the same time. Like, and that yeah. it, now it's well, like the one media of those controls that it. Wait, wait, wait. Now it's one of those things where it's like where people jump to like a worse version of something that should be accepted. Like, like transgender and transracial are really fucking different things. <laughs> I understand why people compare them. Because they're both trans, is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but one thing, is, one thing that I heard, um, I forget the name of the author, but I read a great article, um, and it was, you know, about the transracial issue. A white person can go and, uh, you know, be transracial and identify as black and make the people around them uh, identify them as black. But at the same time, a black man can never just identify as white. You know, uh, when it comes to police. Michael Jackson did. Doing, <laughs> yeah, but when it comes to police just walking up and giving someone shit, uh, uh, you know, like uh, you, you, you just, no officer, no, I'm white. Trust me, you know, like trust me, trust me, I'm white. <laughs> I'm white. You're just uh, you know seeing me wrong. You're not you're not identifying me properly. Um, but no, she but, didn't. No, no, no. She didn't have like an operation or anything. She just no. started telling people she was, or I don't know exactly how it happened. Well, uh, from from my perspective, uh, I don't see anything <laughs> wrong with. I don't see Sorry. I don't see anything wrong with this woman uh, representing the uh, neither do NAACP I. in her area. There's nothing wrong with that. She's she, she's, she's helping. She's doing good. No, yeah. I definitely see a problem because she was deceptive. She fetishized the race. That is okay. That's what well, I was going to get to. Better then. than shitty. She's gloving it. It's better than hating on it. It's like but we get mad like, at white like people, people for loving saying. the race, and then we get mad at them for hating it. It's like no, what do you want them like, to do? But she wasn't admitting to the fact that she actually has white privilege. Like, it's true. Um, you put it on or take it off. Like, I'm still waiting for my white privilege check because all I know is that I haven't got one in a while, and I'd like one if, if, if there's such like I don't know. I'll, I'll give you a fucking white privilege check. Thank yeah, you. Send it. Check send your it privilege. My way. Yeah, check Sorry. check yourself. You know. Hey, listen, I'm sitting here from my 39th floor condo across the street from the ACC right now, all right? Oh, you're I so just, Toronto. Uh, all right? I sip it, up, <laughs> sip it on my coffee, doing this on my iPhone 6 while streaming just streaming American Netflix on my Apple TV and typing up on my MacBook, all right? So fuck you both. You're both How much peasants. product placement uh, lives in your life? <laughs> um, I, well, I don't know. I just got paid $500 for that sentence, so... <laughs> <laughs> no, but wait a uh, second. Anyway, Hold on a second. That's your I fucking check. Like, that's I want to get. I want to get back to the topic, guys. Yeah, sorry, guys. Um, now, now yeah, the, the real question is: Do you think that that um, I, fuck, I wish I, I remembered her name. The Michael Jackson thing is a good callback, though. I'm just reiterating that. That was. Well, uh, he, he did the same thing. Like, anyways. <laughs> anyway, so uh, get, to get back to the topic, do you think? Do you think uh, this? would affect her ability to represent uh, the NAACP? Because she is a mother of two African-American children. Uh, whether or not they're adopted, I don't think that matters. Uh, so, you know, when you, when you let's imagine a mixed-race family. Does that mean that... I, feel, you, I, I mean, like, I'm not saying I can put myself in the shoes, but, like, if someone's representing my group, uh, you know, I'd want them to be part of my group. Yeah, but isn't, like, the coach of, like, the, like the one of, like like... 
Sweden soccer team from Italy. So, like, I don't know. I maybe like this. I'm just saying, like, if someone's a good leader for a cause, then like, if there was like where a... they're from, if they're helping you win the gold, it doesn't matter where they're from. What matters is what the job gets done. If if she's actually making progress for the for the NAACP and like she's moved it forward, why do we care? Well, I think you know what I, I wonder you know what if I mean? she was always has she commented to the press yet? Like, what's? Uh, I believe she has. Um, what was her reasoning? We, we just, we're so was fickle about like, how we want the progress. Like, was she just delusional and thought she actually was? I've never met her, and I've never had a conversation with her, so I don't know. Go yeah, get I, her. Can you go get her, please? Oh, yeah, sure. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I'm going to use my white privilege to call up my chopper please and send use her. Use that magical white privilege <laughs> Apple thing you have. Siri, get the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we shouldn't be mocking white privilege this much because it is a real thing. No, it is well, a real that's thing. That's why we're, totally we're mocking it now. We're mocking it. I know, I know, but it's like... What, 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 are, we, what are we allowed to talk about anymore? We're not days? allowed to talk about we're it. We're not a group of politicians. We're a group of... We're, a group, we're not a group of politicians trying to like create some national policy. We're a group of three comedians... Actors and, and opinionated morons okay, so <laughs> doing a podcast on a Sunday afternoon. It's because people are, so un- like, people, are people are so Like people are unforgiving. People are unforgiving. They don't. We don't forgive people that make mistakes very who easily. Who cares? Let them let them say what they want. If they're intelligent to see through the drop through the. If you're dumb enough to take what I say at face value, I don't want you to like me anyways. Like I I could be not bothered with you. There are so many people. There's so many people in this world. And so many fish to fry. I'm not going to waste my time chasing minnows. Yeah, but you're wor- but also, okay. I agree with you, but also just to be devil's advocate, like words have uh, power. Words have power. So I mean, only you if you let them. Matter. When I was a, only when I was a little boy, I was told I was bullied a lot for being very fat, and I uh, and I and I said to my mom, I said, Mom, uh, I came home crying, and I said, I'm, I'm fat. People are bullying me for being fat, wanting her to hug me and say, sweetie, you're not fat. My mom said, well, Matt, you're fat. She goes, that's what's going to happen. Kids are going to bully you. That's the world. That's the world. You have two, three options. You either A, lose some weight, eat a little healthier, dot, stop getting bullied. B, accept the fact that you're fat and move on. Or C, continue crying about it and be a little bitch. You have three choices. Pick one. Did she say little bitch? No, she didn't. But it would have been great if she did. Yeah, but there's, there's a big difference between being overweight, which is something you can manage and control, Absolutely. and I'm being not... an African American. Yeah, there's yeah, a huge of course. difference there because that's of not course. something you can change. And the perspective uh, in relation to authority, like – that that's not something that can but be that's, changed. But well, that, that, wasn't using, that, that anecdote wasn't for that point, though. That anecdote was to was to talk about. Um, but it's a good parallel like, to that point because the Rachel, for her, exactly, it's like she could put it on or take it off. What, which which like, look which which brings me to the next, which which where I want to say how did able-bodied and disabled people get thrown into the mix of like of, of gay, straight, white. And ethnic. Well, people are like, oh, you're able-bodied, white, straight male, can't say this. I'm like, first of all, how dare you throw disabled people into that mix to say that being a woman is the same as having no legs? Like, it's a very different, like, I think it's an insult. I think that, like, who's able to cis? What's Who's actually anti handicap people? Like, this is something that I've been seeing going on on my Facebook now. Like, is this, is this a thing? Well, people Able-ism, are afraid. So this is a thing? I think socially people are afraid sometimes initially of handicapped people. Sometimes, like first reaction is like, so I don't want to I, I, don't I, th- with I that. think that might be, like it's not the same kind of thing where you'll see like, let's say a, a, a racist old man uh, giving shit to some African American kids. I think when it comes to uh, ableism issues, it's more of a uncomfortable, how should I be reacting around this person? The same as you would if they were any. Don't well, that's it. That, of course, yeah, that's... If, you're, if you're talking to a guy in a wheelchair and then you're accidentally don't like... ask him to go for a jog, obviously, but like be like you. Be, but it's... that isn't. It's so obvious. I mean, obviously, yeah, you can't. Well, I don't know. It's just but very then it's like, simple. Should you, should you just like not like hold yourself back from saying the word jog and then look at him with pity? See, that's what. No, we're... you should say go. I'm I'm gonna go for a jog, and he should like. It's it's not up to you. To be, that's the beauty of being an adult, right? The beauty. Uh, oh, wh- why I remember I brought up the story about me being fat as a kid. 
was because I remember as a child, from a very young age, after this story, does anyone here remember this playground phrase? I'm rubber, you're glue, whatever you say sticks off me, bounces off me and sticks to you. Whatever happened to that? We all Great grow up into adults. And the beauty of being an adult is you have the power to listen or not listen to anything. And you also have the power to say or not say anything. And that's the beauty of being that's an adult. True, is you, someone could say something, you go, this person's clearly fucked up. It's not my. It, it's not me. It's them. No, and but when it's with everyone, life. and when it's everyone, and you're systematically being kept down by uh, everyone, or yeah, like well, the majority of people. Yeah. Again, it's not, I'm not I'm, something you can ignore. No, you, know? you can't ignore it. And I'm not talking about. And I'm not talking about systematic racism now. Now I'm just talking about someone who says something stupid and gets posted. So our world star never like the But that's person. why it's it like it's like without the systematic. Right. So let's not worry but, about the minnows and let's go after the big fish, which is how to is the system and how to fix the system. Which unfortunately, in my my opinion, it can't be fixed because no matter what you do, everything looks beautiful on paper. Every theory, every principle, every system, every framework, every class, every policy looks wonderful on paper, but you give it to human beings who are innately flawed to run it, and the system will corrupt yeah, eventually. Yeah, but you're talking about the larger picture versus, like, just particular issues that do... Yeah, because I, I don't have time, time to waste with those little issues. Because they don't little, really affect you. Exactly. So, uh, personally, <laughs> I have every right to ignore them because they're not... I'm not a hero. I'm not, I'm not a <laughs> Superman. I'm not a villain. I'm, just, I'm not a good guy. I'm not a bad guy. I'm just a guy doing things. I'm just a guy, and, I, and that's the problem. Is everyone wants to be a hero nowadays? That we're all trying so hard to find anything to fight for that we're not picking our battles, and we're and we're and we're creating more conflict than we than anything else. We're trying to fight big fires with little fires, as opposed to drowning it with a river of white water. And but that's you what you've got to do. But it's like you don't have to fight. Like the main thing is like at the very least, you just have to know. That's why they're saying be sensitive. Yeah. Literally the least you could do. <laughs> and I, I think for the most part, most people do this. It's not like people go out of their way to try no. and offend other people. Um, Greg's absolutely right. And I, I mean, a lot of the time, it's people that have no intention of offending that accidentally do it because they said one thing that either, uh, you know, it, it's one thing, it was a taboo thing to say, or, or maybe it was just a misunderstanding. Or uh, it was a joke. joke. It was yeah, on stage. Joke, like, said in jest, said in... in it's, said so that you were supposed to be like that stupid thing to say, not but like don't like, I, think that person's being for real. Couldn't you just say that about anything you say at all times so that nobody can ever hold you to anything you've said? Absolutely, and that's the beauty of never really knowing what's inside someone's head, and that's where context and understanding and judgment calls come into play. You're never going to know the right answer. You'll never, ever know someone's true intentions because you'll never be inside their head and live their experiences and perceive them the way they did. And that's the problem, is we're trying to figure people out and not just accept them for who they are. Um, any, any, oh. any more comments about this, uh, this story? I don't know. It's like I need to digest what we were just talking about some more. But, yeah, let's move on. Move on. Okay, so let's move on to the next topic. Um, earlier this week, uh, the CEO of Reddit, Ellen Pau, um, announced that they were going to be deleting some subreddits. Uh, there were five that were deleted in the first wave. I don't know if there's going to be a second wave. Um, hasn't really been announced. Uh, but the one that w uh, made the biggest splash was uh, r slash fat people hate, which is uh, a site mocking fat people, or, or uh, a subreddit mocking fat people. Um, now, the question I want to pose to you guys is, like, is this uh, is this censorship? Is this is this the kind of thing that should be left open? I think it's hilarious the whole the whole fact that this conversation exists, the <laughs> fact that we've come to a point in society where an internet common board has been shut down. That's that with the title what hate fat people. Uh, yeah, fat people hate. <laughs> so it was basically a subreddit where people would mock fat people, post pictures of fat people with funny memes or whatever. whatever. Really um, mean. It's so mean. Everyone involved in this is pathetic. I'm sorry, yeah. but everyone involved. <laughs> <laughs> everyone involved in this. 
and now we are because we're talking about it. It's like just as pathetic. As that. Bring it down. See, I have a, I have a particular, uh, I have, I have a, a view on this because I am right. fat people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, watch out. Are you sure you're not, not pretending? <laughs> I got over. I, I, See, I was fat, but I identified as thin, so I, I got I'm trans fat. <laughs> I'm trans fat. Uh, I'm a trans fat person. What, you like margarine? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> I'm trans margarine. Okay, no, the trans fat thing is funny. I, I should trademark that. <laughs> anyway, so funny, I, 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 I don't know. I'm, I'm like 40 or 50 pounds overweight myself. Trans um, fat. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I personally like I'm not I'm not obviously I'm not the type of person that they're talking about on there. Like I spit water out on my keyboard. Like <laughs> sure hands fat. That's a good line. Anyways, so yeah. Okay, sorry. So I, I mean I'm not I'm obviously I'm not the kind of person they're talking about on there. The people they're talking about are people who are like uh, perhaps morbidly obese, like pushing three or four hundred pounds. Right, and like once you buy two tickets you... on the plane. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, but that's that's true. That's a thing that happens. Um, I just I, I get the logic behind that theory. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I get there are people, fat people are people, but like in terms of well, you're you're the double the weight, double the seating, you're you're costing us money at this point. There's a, there's like I don't know. I pay more for bigger clothes sometimes, I, and I'm six. I'm six eight. I gotta pay more for better for bigger for oh, baby, more legroom. Baby clothes are tiny and they're so expensive. Ah, that's because you need those little, those little hand, the little, the little detailed hands. You need fine, fine sewing. Anyway, sorry, Greg, we just hijacked that again. No, it's fine. Um, now I, I don't know if you guys want to hear my opinion. I was really hoping. I do. I do. I do. No, sorry. We never want to hear from you again. Um, okay. <laughs> sorry, Greg. No, but, uh, as far as censorship goes, I mean, Reddit is a. Uh, uh, it's it's a company, right? It's a right. bond sold by shareholders, and as a company, I think they have the right to do whatever whatever they, they want. want. Um, and then it's up to the consumer to decide what they want to do from that point on. Absolutely. I, I, don't, I, I don't necessarily think like uh, with the "are fat people hate." Like they're not saying you're not allowed to make fun of fat people. Uh, it's like um, they're allowed to say don't do it here. It, don't do it here. It's like yeah. the issue. Uh, it's like the issue. Take uh, it outside, guys. In when a fight. they. Uh, something we saw not too long ago but in Montreal. That she's, not, she's not fat, the person who's saying you can't make fun of fat people. No, it's true. Uh, she's uh, No, she's not a fat woman at all. Um, but yeah. this, this issue to me is, is uh, similar to... Because um, if it was a fat person, the internet would be all over that shit. That's true. It's true. Well, the internet is already all over that shit. Uh, there was a campaign the day after it happened uh, where uh, I think it was something like 16 out of the top 20 Reddit posts were pictures of Nazi flags with, uh, and it was yeah. saying, yeah, it was saying upvote this. Uh, so when uh, people Google Ellen Pow, they this is the image that pops up, and it was like 16 out of the top 20 Reddit. Jesus, on people are so quick to call people Nazis these days. I know, I know, it's it's yeah, it's really overplayed. Yeah. Anyway, this this issue to me is a lot like the issue we had in Montreal with the homeless. Uh, people were putting uh, spikes in front of their businesses on the grounds so that the homeless <laughs> would sleep there, and uh, everyone seemed to have a real big problem with this. And I, I a good grip for a mattress. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought anyway, the homes are training to be like circus people, where they get just like <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Anyway, my, my, my particular view on that was, uh, you know, it's not, they're not saying fat, uh, you know, it's not like they're going out and they're shooting homeless people. It's just they can't sleep in this specific spot. So that, that was kind you of know, my perspective on that. I, I hate that. But, but the thing is it goes with the territory of being homeless. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm not homeless, right? I get it. But the way I look at it is, like, if I it's was, like I wouldn't good. complain. No, but if I was, I wouldn't complain. If you were homeless, you wouldn't complain. I wouldn't complain that I'm not allowed to sleep in front of this guy's store. Like, I would go find another place because it's, like, it's where I am. Like, I've been in situations like that where, like, I've been locked out of a friend's house and I had to, I once slept in the, between That's two doors in a veterinarian. At all. No, it's not, but I'm trying to relate. Don't crim incriminate me for trying to relate. Yeah, okay, you're trying. I'm trying to get inside the head and I'm going, look, this guy's got no home. This guy's got a business to run. Right? Is he supposed to have people? And I'm not saying either one is right. That's not. I'm not a hero. I'm not a judge. I'm just observing. And what I observe is that if you're homeless, and then some dude who's got a livelihood to run and is looking to feed his kids, has a business, and you're just like detracting his his business 
he has every fucking right to go, meh, I'm going to invest in a $100 spike so I can make this $400 sale because you're creeping out the guy in the suit. And the guy in the suit, unfortunately, may be a dick because he doesn't want to walk by the homeless guy, but we live in a capitalist society where money talks. Is it right? Is it wrong? That's a discussion for another day. That's just the system we're in right now. And right. you have to, and they're allowed to do that. It's are they, are they dicks? Probably, but they're not wrong. I just, I was just saying, I don't like it because it's like it's a very um, visual cue that like this person is like fuck you. Like, <laughs> I mean, I mean, and I understand they'll have to spend money taking. Just care because of you're not trying to be Jesus doesn't make you a bad person. That, I'm not saying I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about the people that would vilify a person like that. I like don't the vilification of I not just, being a good person. I don't vilify it. I just don't like it. It doesn't feel warm and cuddly to see it's that true. around the um, building. I mean, it's it's not necessarily like... And at the same time, they're not necessarily doing it because they hate the homeless. But no. at, the, at the same time, as a business owner, I can understand that right. you know, when your business opens at 9 a.m. and there's a homeless person sleeping on the entryway to your business... That's going to affect people. People are like, oh, no, I'm not going in this step in I'm going to go to the one that doesn't have a homeless guy sleeping in front who's, of me. Yeah. It, I, man, I, I, it's like, man, I get, yeah, it'd be nice to have a great comfy place to sleep, but it'd also be nice to have a little more clientele. I guess like, one would just hope that the, the successful man is at least, like, contributing to make, a, make society better. <laughs> As long as you have enough money to hit every bill, like it's a yellow light on the highway, enough to get by, everything else you can go to the rest. That's all. That's how the way I look at it. Just give me enough money to cruise on through, hitting every bill. In. To. Are you still there? Yeah, Matt, we're losing you. I'm here. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, that's that's silly. Yeah. Oh, it's back now. You're. I'm here. Anyways. I don't know. I think paying every bill is relative. I think, every, like, it's important people just, well, whatever. It's very preachy. But, like, I would hope people make the effort anyways. All right. I'm going to be right back, okay, guys? I'm going to mute myself. I'll be back in just a minute. Keep going. You're going to meet yourself? Uh, I'm <laughs> mute myself. I'll be right back, okay? Oh, okay. Okay. Fine. Just ditch. Just leave hey, us. Rita, that great guy's a dick. Wait. He mute Man. us or himself? I think he muted. I think he can hear us. <laughs> I don't even care. <laughs> you know what? Neither do I, because I hate fat people. <laughs> I, knew, I knew the fat thing was gonna come up. I hate, I hate fat people. I hate women. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I um, hate everyone. God damn it! Because America wins. America. So See much... what happens when Greg leaves? What were we the, even talking about? <laughs> we were talking about uh. Um, the Ellen Powell or whatever on I was gonna say Ellen Page, but Ellen Powell on uh, subreddit with the hating fat people and Ellen. having the right to shut it down because like she's got a business to run and like it's like yeah I, I you say what you want about hating fat people just don't do it here and I look at it like two guys in a bar who are fighting and the bartender's like look you guys fight wherever the fuck you want I don't even shit about who's right or who's wrong just don't be fighting in my bar because I got a business to run yeah I agree with that. Yeah. I mean, I I like that she did it because those were really mean, yeah. mean spirited meanies. Like I mean. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna keep saying the word mean. <laughs> For the record, I took a personality test of the Myers Briggs there. But I have been. Oh my god! I was just thinking about that. I'm ENFP. Did, I'm, e I'm ENTP. Oh. Which means I don't really. I'm not very good at. Sensitivity. No. One of my Don't biggest weaknesses is yeah, sensitive to people's you're insensitivity. Do you think no. you're a sociopath? Have you thought no, about that? No, I'm not. I'm uh, I'm 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 actually uh, I'm not. I was told that by by a man with a with a designation who has the right to say those things. Really? Yeah, I do. I talk to a therapist. How did he check if you were a sociopath, or like what was his proof that you weren't? Well, he he's worked in prisons with like sociopaths before and stuff like that. He was wow. he knew. Why? Just, what did you do to end up talking to that guy? <laughs> I was just getting tired of things, and I was like, "I need someone to talk to. He's not going to be so so offended by everything that I have to say." <laughs> but well, uh, yeah, ENTP. You know who else is an ENTP? Huh? Who? My my my, my main man, Billy Burr. Oh, Bill Burr. I was like scared you were gonna say Hitler for some reason. I'm going, I'm going really dark on oh, this. The Jewish girl is worried you're gonna say Hitler's your friend. Oh. 
he didn't do anything against me. <laughs> I got no personal beef with him. You guys see him that's like, but no, he did things against human beings, and you're yeah, a human yeah. being. Ah, ah, that's, uh, uh, or are you? I don't know. Tell me. Where are no, you? Matt Gass is actually three penguins in a man suit. <laughs> I see what you do on there, you and that penguin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we got about ten minutes left in the feed. Uh, this is fun. Yeah, it, it's really fun. I'm, I'm, I'm actually enjoying this good first episode. This is uh, great. Uh, so I sound one... like an asshole, but this Greg is, is so great. Happy. He's like, yes, it sure has been fun. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's my job as a host. Uh, <laughs> so there's one more issue that I wanted to talk about, and this is the one that affected me uh, probably the hardest, and the one that made me want to make this thing in the first place. So take her away, buddy. And that was the Spielberg picture. Uh, <laughs> for the second time in a year, the Internet has become outraged over a picture of Steven Spielberg uh, leaning next to uh, a robotic triceratops. <laughs> 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 and people got outraged uh, because he's because they hate hunters. <laughs> hunters like Steven Spielberg, who poached this poor Triceratops. Do you know and how many <laughs> manual labor hours were were wasted in creating that robotic dinosaur after after he pulled that plug? That electronically robotic poaching asshole. That's <laughs> think about it. Robots have feelings too, Greg. Robots have feelings too. I just, I really like the anachronism of a robotic uh, prehistoric. I like that combo. That's all I have to say about it. Robotic and prehistoric, and how it's like two different, like. It's like good. it's like if time were a burrito, they'd be yeah. <laughs> in the middle. I want, I want to, I want to. My first comedy album is going to be called Prehistoric Robotics. <laughs> ah, Steeler. 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 <laughs> <laughs> pro, pro, uh, it's going to be pro, prehistoric, prehistoric robotics all about the trans fat. <laughs> I, I don't understand, though. What, what really pissed me off is how are there people out there who don't know what a dinosaur is? Like, oh, that's, that, uh, and to me, that's a perfect that's example. Religious education, right? <laughs> no. yeah, well, that was, I, didn't even, I didn't even go that way. I was, just, I was moving past religious and going, idiots are out there. I was just going. I went way no, that's, past. That's it. the heart of the matter because I'm sure there's idiots on every end of the spectrum. I was just. Of course. Oh, that's one of the main points I wanted to say today is like, the it's just the people that are screaming social injustice at justice at every single post are the exact same as the people screaming uh, ignorant racist belligerent shit on the other end of the spectrum. They're just they're playing the same game. They're just wearing a different jersey. That's well, all it I've is. known I've known perfectly politically correct in public people that you know date rape. <laughs> yeah, it's always it's the quiet ones you got to watch out for. Scary. Not this laughing maniac. I'm safe. You guys are good. I get my. I kicks definitely from this. don't. I don't trust that at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <We're> gonna, <laughs> Matt, we're gonna put date rapist on your business card. Okay. That no, sounds no, good. No, no. That's good. Or uh, you go have a therapist. It doesn't. It doesn't have to be on a date, though, so you can just put rapist. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Oh. See, this is why... This is where we. This is where the, it all just went downhill right here. Oh. Yeah, uh, trigger warning, uh, we're douchebags. Um, <laughs> I grew up listening to Eminem. Fuck, what do you want from me? There's a difference between... I was just... Blaming it on Eminem? Wait, yep. okay. Eminem is someone who... I'm well, blaming it all on Eminem. All of it. It's all on Eminem. I can't add to the responsibility of my own actions or words. I blame society, the media, and Slim, chicka, chicka slim Shady. <laughs> um, well, please just stand up already. <laughs> please. Just. Please. I'm, sorry, I'm standing way up right now. All right. So uh, uh, let me get your opinion on this, guys. We we, we touched on this before the uh, the broadcast started. Uh, what 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 are your opinion on trigger warnings? <laughs> what does that trigger mean? Wait, trigger means warning? warning. Something's gonna make you angry. Oh. Because uh, no offense, but <laughs> yeah. Well, no, this is something. It's just like, uh, say, for instance, we were going to talk about, let's say, like, let's throw the worst 
example out there. Uh, we're gonna How talk... I just said I'm a, I'm a rapist. Yeah, exactly. Like, so we're going to, during this conversation, we're going to touch on issues of sexual violence. So you would throw a trigger warning in at the beginning of it uh, so that people know that, hey, there's going to be a conversation about sexual violence. So I someone think that's who... good. I think it's good to do that. Yeah, I mean, we've been doing this uh, for for ages on TV, right? Every time a TV show starts, and they're going to touch on something horrible. Graphic mature attention is blah, 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 blah. yeah, uh, not appropriate for children. Please keep. Well, but it's so that they're not legally uh, responsible, probably. But I, I like, like that you said inappropriate for children. <laughs> No, but this is this is something now, and, and and we're seeing it more and more and more. I mean, you go to read an article online where they, they like even there's a brief mention of uh, you know someone who is arrested for uh, sexual violence, and trigger warning at the beginning of it contains issues of sexual violence. Now, do you think that like it, it, has this gone I think too it far? Makes, it makes it, people want to watch more or read. Yeah, more. I'm I'm down for the I'm down. Absolutely. The sentence, like it's like that's that's what draws people in more mm -hmm. so than puts them off. But what I like about it is that it's disarming and that if people need the warning, it's there and not enough. Parental advisory, explicit content, you know, on every one of like the CDs is you know when you buy or shit like that, you know, it almost like like you said, Rita, it helps sell. Yeah, it makes the kid want to buy that, it more. If it's when right Andrew there. Dice Clay got banned from MTV, his album sales and his publicity skyrocketed. Because he became the comedian that got banned from MTV. When Slim Shady, when Eminem got banned, he same thing happened to him because everyone wanted to see. When did he get banned? I didn't he know. didn't get banned from MTV, but like um, when people, when the parents were like burning his albums and like uh, you know, like the whole like anti Eminem movement from the, back in the early two thousands. Funny if he was posing as anti Eminem and then leading that movement. That would be funny. Yeah. yeah. Definitely make a lot of money doing that. I feel like I would do that. Wasn't there? There was a playwright, uh, Dostoevsky, used to protest. He didn't like the way Chekhov was directing his plays. He would go protest outside. <laughs> That's funny. You know now, what? Uh, I'm all for being the bad guy. Now, you know where this comes from, right? Like, uh, triggered, like, say, for instance, uh, a soldier gets back from war and uh, he goes to, let's say, right. a parade with fireworks and the explosions could cause him to. Uh, become emotionally unstable because this would remind him of, of uh, you know, his, his time in combat or something like this. And by the same vein, a, a woman that might, may have experienced sexual violence, um, you know, if she's watching, let's say, for instance, an episode of Law & Order SVU, uh, where they have, a, you know, maybe not, you know, not going to show nudity on television, but like a, a part where, you know, a guy is holding a woman down to uh, commit an act of sexual violence, that might trigger them uh, to relive the experience. Right. So that's that's basically what the meaning of, of the word is. But uh, now it seems like we're seeing it more and more and more uh, for stuff that that is just otherwise benign. Like, uh, what was it? I was watching uh, I was watching a a feed on YouTube, uh, and there was a, a woman that was being harassed online uh, by she she was playing video games live online. And uh, someone got on the feed with her, and they're like, oh, look, like I'm going to use a naughty word here, people, uh, but look at all these faggots online making fun of you. Um, and, and she asked the guy, like, oh, you just triggered me. Please don't use that word. I have friends that are, uh, that are gay. And, but th that's a total misuse of the term. Like, yeah, you can find that offensive, but you're not triggered. You're not going to go into post-traumatic stress Right, mode. right. Okay, or, I see what you mean. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that's the kind of stuff we're seeing. Like people are uh, conflating the the term. It's, uh, it's it's again. It's people taking it and using it for extremists to push their own their own little sensitivity and feign offense. This well, I think to, that people want something to believe in and to be passionate about. Absolutely. And, you know, and they want it to be something they do believe in. So it's like they want it to be. It's it, like it's not like what you said. Sorry, go ahead, Rena. I just no, 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 no. Okay, no, hey, I and didn't have anything else. It I was like what Greg you said to me. We were messaging each other, and you said it takes away from the meaning of people who actually do care. You know, and that's like the number one like backlash, right? Like the loud. The, so basically, there's every group of people. There's like the one leader, if you will, and then the rest of followers. You know, like in every in every little group of friends or click of friends in the office you know on the street. So you know what I mean? The way, what's that? I don't know if it's so clear all the time. I think that Well, there's clear. like there's the trendsetters and there's the people that follow. And and when you have when you have idiots 
on either end are people like who are using trigger way too freely or people that are being way too insensitive way too often. You have people that follow either side blindly, not really knowing. And it happens in politics where people just go, I'm going to vote for this party because my friends did. And they're not informed. It's all about being informed and knowing what the word means. And, and that goes back to what Seinfeld said when he said, kids don't know what they're talking about these days when they say that's sexist or that's racist. They're just saying it to say it, and they don't know what it means because they're not fully informed, and they're using the triggers to, faint, to, to create attention and, and just stand up for something they believe in. And very Seinfeldian, we went right back full circle back to the, the, first, the first topic. I don't, know. I don't. I don't feel like I'm on sign like Seinfeld's side necessarily, but I think I'm, whole... I'm on. He's allowed to have an opinion, and he's allowed right. to do whatever the fuck he wants. Okay, Rena, uh, if you'd like to, uh, you can address that. that right now. Yeah. Like, in what respect don't you necessarily agree with the opinion? I. What do you mean? Actually, well, I. You're oh. just saying you don't necessarily agree with his opinion. It's so. just it's like he's not living it. He's the older person talking about young people from his own perspective, but it's like, you're not in college right now, and you don't really know. It's the whole outsider's thing. It's like, yeah, okay, but he's, but he's, but has he not put in his time and worked and lived life enough? Like, it's like, you know, it's a, it's a, there's a double standard in old people don't know what they're talking about because they're too out of touch. Young people don't know what they're talking about because they Nobody haven't experienced Nobody knows what they're enough. talking about. We live in the exactly. town of Babel. So, you know, it's... Uh, it's just, you're absolutely right. So for the, way, the way I look at it, uh, say what he, <laughs> he'll say what he says. He's allowed to do whatever colleges he wants. He's allowed to say what he wants. But he can with, say whatever Greg's, he wants. With, with Greg's I point about the... Whatever absolutely. I want about it. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's that. And, 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 and with back to Greg's point about the trigger words, like obviously none of this matters. None of this. This whole conversation doesn't matter. In the end, we're all going to the same kind of box or the same kind of vase. I mean, it might but, not be the same kind. Like, well, I mean, I might get mahogany. You might get oak. You know, who knows what we could afford? I want the mahogany. <laughs> you want the mahogany? Yeah. But like in the end, you know, like it goes back to, to, to relate Greg's final point to the intro point of, and to sum up what I think would be the main, what I've taken from this, what we've all agreed on is. It all boils down to know what you're talking about. Be as informed as you can. Let others ask questions. Don't get so upset when people aren't trying to hurt you and they're just trying to learn. And let's all just fucking relax a little and just understand that there are people that are trying to hurt us and people that are not trying to hurt us. And just with the information you have at hand, just try and make a fucking judgment call. That's it. In my all opinion. Right. All right. So that... Uh... That's, that's like, my opinion. I'm done. That's the white I've said man. my piece. The white man has spoken. The white, the man, white has... man has spoken, and I'm going to go right now, and I'm going to go count my, my change jar that has $100 bills in it. Okay, guys? <laughs> that's right. correct with you. Any so, that, <laughs> so that's, uh, that's going to do it for this week. Uh, I just want to thank both of you guys for coming on. Um, yeah, Thanks, Matt. Uh, Matt, what are you up to this week? Uh, oh, I have, uh, I've got shows. I'm working on some, uh, my, some mini series that I've got to created that I'm trying to, but we're filming in a months, a couple weeks, and uh, I have a, in Toronto. You're in and out. Matt, we're losing Times you. Cafe. Ah, Matt. shit, I think it's because I just got a text message. So popular. Anyways, like... yeah, it's, it's not easy being this fucking awesome, but uh, <laughs> I have a, a monthly show me running at Free Times Cafe on Codden Spadina, last Thursday of every month, starting in July, called Backroom Comedy. I used to run one in... Montreal, it's moved to Toronto. So, uh, yeah. That's awesome. Reens, uh, what are you up to this week? Cool. Okay, so these are both in the belly room at the comedy store. So Sick today. room. Tonight, uh, I've been doing, there's a mic called the Show Up, Go Up. So if you want to come and try to get up, try. And you also, I have a segment that I do there every two weeks uh, where it's for comedians that want to try out doing characters or imitations. Um, so tonight, we have really exciting guests. Uh, Neil Nanda is going to be playing a robot from the future, and uh, Jeremiah Watkins is going to be playing his German character. I forget his name, but very funny, and I'm going to play a very lonely old lady, and uh, it's going to be very... Are you acting, or just, just existing yeah. up there? Which one is it? It's kind of like a five-minute segment talk show type Sick. of thing. And if Sick. you've been to the show, go up, you know what kind of chaos and fun that is. And yeah. then Tuesday night at the roast battle... <laughs> 
I'm going to be representing my country and singing the Canadian national anthem as the opening. Sick. Uh, I used to go to. Huh? You used, used to go, go to, to that all the time. Yeah. yeah. The Rose Battle, and actually, the Rose Battle is an amazing show that you should all check out. It's 11:30 in the Belly Room Tuesday nights at the Comedy Store. Wow. Real yeah. battle, battle. And it's and the thing is, like that battle uh, has a lot to do with with the issues we were talking about. I mean, very interesting. If you want to see how comedy attacks issues of race and stuff like that, it's very interesting, very good show. So come there, the end. All right. Well, uh, thanks a lot for listening, everybody. Uh, I'm Greg Hamilton. If you want to follow me on Twitter, my handle is GregMyMofo. Um, and tune in next week when the topic is going to be diversity in comics with Jason Yero and Erica Tadeo. Uh, nice. Thanks a lot. Have a great Thank day, Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Bye, guys. Bye.